All right. Hello and welcome again to another Trino contributor call. Uh, it's the 22nd of August today, and we have a small but mighty uh, group of people here discussing what's happening in the Trino ecosystem. I do have a little bit of an agenda, just not much, but where's my editor? So first update, I guess, um, worth noting of uh, is that is that we now have a official Trino JS client project. Um, Felipe Regalas from Spotify was kind enough to donate his client that has been working well in the Emacs and Visual Code integration for quite some time, which is great because that's a pretty big use base or user base. Um, and we are currently in the process of making it ready to cut a first release within the uh, Trino ecosystem. Um, we already did a bunch of upgrades and improvements. Um, it is not published to the NPM registry yet. We have to sort out access credentials and that kind of stuff. Uh, the idea is that we want this to be like the official JavaScript client, which uh, will allow us to uh, improve it more rapidly and also keep it closer to adapt new features that we're implementing on the client protocol improvements that we're currently doing, similar to uh, what we will be able to do on the Python client and the JDBC driver, uh, which is going to be uh, really good uh, because there's obviously a lot of use cases for a JavaScript client. There's lots of people come out of the university all the time that think JavaScript is it. <laughs> so um, that's good news. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else anyone wants to mention about this or if there's any questions. Cole is here as well. He's Gonna maybe be helping a little bit and making this all more modern and stuff like that. He's a bit of a JavaScript whiz. Um, anything else anyone wants to ask or say about that? Jump in now. <laughs> all right. Well, that sounds good. Second JavaScript news with the arrival of Trino four fifty four. Um, we have a new user interface that we're working on. And that is basically a, the plan is over time that we replace this. Currently, if you run Trino like that, as usual, um, and you configure it, pre configure the preview interface to be on, you can go in your URL and go preview and you see the new interface. Um, it doesn't do anything yet, but it has all the scaffolding in terms of the build and all that kind of stuff in place. And it, uh, starts to have like, you know, different tabs and core functionality. Um, nothing really yet in terms of actually doing something, but that's kind of the next steps. We're going to improve that over time, make the look and feel sort of like aligned with Trino. The stack is much more modern than what the old system is. And it's the same or close to the same stack as what the user interface in Trino gateway has. Um, so hopefully over time we can make this equivalent slash quite bad, quite a bit better than the old user interface and then ultimately throw that away. We have also been doing improvements on the old interface a little bit, just update to dependencies to avoid security issues and improving some colors and that kind of stuff. So if that changes a little bit, you'll notice that as well, but um, that's where we're at. Um, for both of those JavaScript projects, as well as the Trino Gateway UI, if you know JavaScript and want to hack on this kind of stuff, we would love your help because most of us are much more invested in the Java side of things and know that much better. So this is kind of a semi-alien to us, but um, any help would be appreciated and we want to get this going to be a really good experience for everyone. Is, is Kyle working on this by chance? No. Oh, okay. You mean Kyle Fraser? No. Yeah. Okay. No. He's so good at this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, uh, Cole is helping a little bit. Um, it's all a community-driven effort, and I think it's been really great so far. Um, cool. We'll see I how have it goes. A friend, I have a friend that might be interested who who did some work on the Iceberg website. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, there is a, well, like like a roadmap kind of issue there okay. where we file things in and stuff like that. And essentially, we want to basically build this out to be a replacement for the existing one. It already has funky stuff like, you know, like the different like dark mode kind of things and like that come with modern frameworks, which is kind of cool. 
has 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 okay sorry i'm coming in total this is the first time i'm actually seeing this new dashboard but is there a um uh is there like a does general philosophy of how the design should like i know there's a lot of like ux type stuff we are following or like the component like, like that's one of the difference that has been chosen to follow is like the trino website generally yeah, has been for like mater that. material as a ui we're using the trino website colors and scheme or that's what we're trying to do and um we're using material as material ui as the like look and feel and like MK docs material no no the framework oh, is different but it's both okay. material um okay got it mkdocs material is used for the trino gateway website got it okay but yeah, so so we're kind of like sort of semi-standardized on the material look and feel and UI. So that I'm just wondering, like, do we that. have goals for like what we're trying to achieve with the UI changes? I guess is is probably from a community standpoint, what's the best way to drive this? Because we don't have like a UX person. <laughs> yeah, no, like, like we basically want to achieve a modern look and sure. um, a replacement for the for the existing UI. And ideally over the long run, potentially also a pluggable thing because we like, it would be nice to allow things like using the JS client and actually have a query editor in the UI ultimately over time. Yeah. Though that, that we're hoping that the new UI will enable us to go down that path. But obviously this is a huge effort. So it's going to take us quite a but, while to get there specifically also if we don't have many people helping us. Really. But, but would it make sense to actually like, we have money like the Trino fund money, right? Could we put, like vote on seeing if we want to use that or even just Martin, Dan and David, if they agree <laughs> ultimately, uh, or I don't know if we want to put it through a vote or something like that, but we can basically just say, use some of that money to hire somebody to actually just get the bulk of the design and getting all that stuff in place. And then the rest of it being like, simpler stuff that way because that way it's well that's already house. being like so but the, that stuff is already being done to a large sure. extent by the community and i in terms of funds we don't really have much money at all so sure might not go okay. very far i mean i don't think it would cost much we could actually just maybe put like a we have the collective thing now right we could just make it a campaign yeah, I'm mean, happy to go we, around and ask people for money. The community built all <laughs> the other stuff. UIs. Eventually someone will come around and do it. I don't think we're in any rush here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I just didn't know if we like wanted it. Cause like sometimes when things kind of like chunk here, chunk there, it's not really, there's not an organization. Of it's a pretty, it's a pretty active effort. And I think we okay. have, we will be able to drive more interest. We're going to be announcing it everywhere. And, um, Hopefully we'll find some young web developers. I think there's also an idea to potentially have people from Starburst and other places help. So sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm if there's people at Amazon here. or if there's people at Amazon, hi James, or at LinkedIn, hi Eric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that can help us. That would also be great, of course. Okay. I'm just backseat driver. Having I just learned about this, but this is this looks good. I like this. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna come along. So should be cool. Good. So, um uh, Following up on, on the questions about the goals, so it, it sounds like it's just a look and feel. It's not like we think there are functionality gaps B besides, you know, maybe adding a, a query editor, which sounds like kind uh, of, a, you know, nice to have not. So I, I'm just curious, like, do we feel like there are gaps that, that need to be solved or this is just like, a, eh, it looks kind of old, let's make it look new, but keep the same functionality. There's some stuff that like, other people have built that would be easier to add or contribute if we have like a modern front end framework deployed as our basis. Like adding stuff to the current Trino UI is not very fun. Um, and I think that kind of matters in an open source environment because totally. if you want to go build something like modern React is a better way to go about it. So I, I think this will open the door to improvements on the UI. Is a better way in terms of like, that's what the, if we're going to get a web, like interest of web people to work on this, they want that on their resume. And, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. There, there's some stuff. If you remember from the uh, live contributor chat in Boston, like Microsoft had some stuff developed that we wanted yeah. them to contribute. Nice. So this may be a better way to go about doing that. Yeah. Also, we just got a new tab, the references tab in a recent release for the pruned endpoint. Um, and that was kind of painful to add that. So I think hopefully we will be able to therefore get more features in. And, and I think we all know there are gaps, right? Like the UI is 
very developer focused and very nitty gritty detail oriented. Um, I'm sure there is other things that we could expose, right? Like we have a wealth of information in in the system in terms of like you know query history and like various metrics. A lot of that is not really displayed, right? Like there could be yeah. more. I think part of my concern is that there there is a lot of really powerful functionality in the UI. I think I agree with you that it's mostly developer focused, but like my concern would be that we lose some of that powerful functionality in the name of like, ooh, shiny looking clean mm -hmm. design. And that would really scare me. Um, yeah, no, it's I, just, I just to it be, be really just... hard to like replicate all of that function. There's a lot of, you know, pretty powerful stuff. Just to be clear, we're not going to throw the old one away until we have parity. So, so we want to get all of that over. We fully realize that even though the core sort of like user is kind of like a hardcore developer slash troubleshooter slash, I don't know, administrator or whatever, <laughs> not really well-defined, that functionality is all necessary and yeah. we, we need it. So we need to rule that over one way or another, right? And I would even say like, you know, this type of stuff gets it to where uh, I, I was just talking about this on, we were, you know, uh, excited about GitHub stars hitting 10,000. It's a vanity metric, but there is something to be said about like getting into the zeitgeist of, of people thinking about Trino as like the, the query analytics engine for, uh, or the query analytics engine or, or Postgres of, uh, of, of uh, analytics. And so like, I think that with this, the surge of something that you see like DuckDB where they have this convenience and modern stuff, like there's also value in, in bringing that in. But as, as you mentioned, by the way, I don't, I just see yeah, your, I'm Eric. your computer name. What was your, what was your name? Eric. Eric. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Eric. Um, so, uh, you know, like, like you had mentioned, Eric, like, you know, it, keeping the old functionality incredibly important, but then like having this one, as we start moving things in, and, uh, and also start bringing in functionality like, you know, it would be cool that if you set up a gateway that it would actually somehow show up on this board or having that query uh, kind of thing. Like all of those pieces, I think, would would uh, add richness to the user experience, especially for those who are newer, less experienced and, tr and going for a more like, I think you, we need to have Trino start investing a little bit into the local DuckDB like experience so that it kind of becomes a, a tool for many things um, and gives people more opportunities to learn it in different uh, contexts. Yeah. Um, that's the developer are... at, relations guy in me. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, I think that's totally valid and good. Um, Peter, you are raising your hand. Feel free to jump in anytime. Oh yeah, so thank you. So I just want to give my two cents because actually I'm the person who sent the first initial PR regarding the new uh, UI. And just want to share my what was my what was the reason behind. So yeah, that would um, be great. I was I was struggling a lot in the current UI because I don't like the drop down, and I just wanted wanted to send a small change, and I realized that oh, we are pretty, we are using some pretty old frameworks like Bootstrap three and stuff like that. So I'm doing it uh, doing it as a hobby. So I'm not a UI developer. I'm working more on a, um, as a data engineer, but I'm happy to contribute, and I really appreciate your help and 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 uh, feedback that you sent about uh, this new you, you can feel and stuff like that. And I'm happy to contribute further. And uh, I'm also happy to to hear that uh, in the long run, you mentioned uh, you would love to have a query editor in, in the UI. It would be absolutely awesome, in my opinion. And that was my hidden long, long, long term goal with, with the UI. I was really missing it for a long time in the Trino uh, UI. So it would be awesome. And currently, I'm working on the authentication with so the scaffolding, uh, as mentioned, is regarding the UI is uh, ready. I'm currently working on the authentication. So there will be a login screen and will be available for all the existing. Uh, authentication method that Trino supports. I think once it's done, we will be in a position to involve more developers because all these functionalities we can split very, very nicely and we can share the works uh, very, very easy. So one guy can work on dashboard, another workers page, another one with a query history, something like that. So 
well just wanted to share my thoughts and because yeah, yeah no that's that's okay. super awesome you yeah, you reminded you. me i totally forgot that you're the one that started this off i messed up from the github name versus the full name <laughs> uh, so yeah thank you so much for that effort and uh, just to be clear on the query editor side um if anyone is interested in that don't start working on that because we have a potential contribution of a fully fledged working query editor in the pipeline. So it makes no sense for someone else to uh, start that afresh. Manfred, maybe maybe we should actually make that a pub, like, I don't know how official this is, if this is coming from Starburst or something, but if, if somebody's working on it's it- It's not we have yet, a... so I can't really make it public, public, uh, public, so. Okay, we, well- I just I, want I to warn people not like to waste issue. Them. So I have another issue to create today anyways. I'm gonna create that that issue with the whole, the, the one you already know about. And I wanna create another issue and we should at least put like, have you have a comment there saying, if you think about working on this- Okay, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> I, I, I can do that. And uh, the, like a, an umbrella ticket for the UI or if it already exists. That's great. So yeah. I will probably link okay, that in the I'll show notes and, and add more info there as well from this discussion here. Perfect. Awesome, thank you so much, everyone. Um, Thanks, Peter. That's awesome. Yeah. Any other questions, concerns, things to talk about about this? It's exciting. Cool. Um, last one I have on the agenda is, oops, sorry, wrong button. GitHub you know, Gateway keeps running around. Um, we have version 10 out, which got us to a stage where we now have Airlift as the base. So Trino Gateway and Trino now both sit on top of Gateway. Uh, of airlift and uh, basically have a lot of similarity in terms of configuration and all that kind of stuff. So uh, really good. And we keep keep uh, going along. We have syncs, dev syncs every two weeks and we're hoping to get to a faster release cycle as you could see between May and July. Uh, that's been a bit slow, but that was because this was a massive change. Um, Helm chart and all that kind of stuff is also there. Um, yeah, this is, Fudging around and it has it shares that UI as I mentioned before. If anyone is interested, we have dev syncs every two weeks on Wednesday, and feel free to jump in on those. So, so this also could be merged into the other UI that we were just talking about in, at some point. No, it has a separate UI. It's but it's using the same stack. Over time, oh. potentially, it might be possible to share components back and forth. The whole sharing stuff back and forth between Trino and Gateway is super complicated, and yeah, yeah, I'm like sure. we're not I... sure yet what to do. Yeah. Um, we are sl slowly moving along. One of the efforts that's coming out of this is also, and that I still owe to organize, is the whole. Um, Kubernetes operator discussion that I will have to kick off. That's hopefully, I'll hopefully gonna be able to kick that off soon now towards the fall. Um, but that's it on the gateway. If anyone's interested in there, Eric, myself and a bunch of others are heavily involved and uh, there's a lot of interest. Uh, it's in used in production and a whole bunch of places already and it seems to be doing good. So that's always good news. Um, that was it from the agenda because I think this person, the Voserov, I forgot his full name, uh, is not here from what I can tell. So the floor is all yours, Vinitha, James, whoever. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> um, so I'll bring up kind of a broad topic. Uh, we, we talked at the um, uh, contributor congregation back in, in Boston about like the need for more reviewers. And I don't know, I, I've been feeling the pain recently as I've been trying to get some reviews on PRs and, you know, no luck. Um, so like, are, are we thinking about, I don't know, actively doing anything about this? And the, the, I kind of, kind of the only thing that comes to mind for me is, um, I don't, I don't know, like trying to, um, kind of set up a pathway for people who express interest in becoming maintainers and, you know, kind of like providing some guidance for like if someone raises their hand and says like, hey, I want to be a maintainer, you know, an existing maintainer helping like, hey, you should review this PR, you know, you should get involved in this area. It, it can be kind of hard. And I think maybe a little bit of, um, uh, you know, guidance and not quite assurance, but, you know, at least some indication that like, 
you know, if you kind of go through this process, there's at least a good chance you could become a maintainer. Like that might provide people the certainty to, for example, go talk to their leadership at their company and say like, hey, I, uh, you know, want to spend 10% of my time on this, 20% of my time on this. And I talked to the community and they agreed that like that could be a path. Um, so I'm just curious, you know, have we thought about anything like this? Any, any ideas about how we're going to kind of get out of this lack of maintainers and reviewers? There's been plenty of thoughts. <laughs> uh, David, James, or Dane, do one of you want to talk about what we talked about at the last maintainer call? Or should I? Uh, well, I have two main thoughts. One is, yeah, you should definitely do that. But two, your your PRs are, uh, I know David and I were actively discussing them. I don't know if it got written down. It's not oh, cool. review. It's it's actually what you're trying to do is way more complicated and kind of break some abstractions, which is why it's taking a while. So Yeah, well, uh, if you could leave that feedback on the PR, like I'd love to be part of that yeah. discussion. All of them are radio uh, silent, so I don't, you know, I mean, it's hard uh, for me to understand. I, I, I hopefully David will follow up on that, but uh, uh, we were at some event and discussing it. So, cool. uh, and hopefully uh, Sanford can go over the rest. Yeah, I can. <laughs> so um, we started to institute regular maintainer calls now as well. And we're also going to have regular um, overall calls for all the maintainers, like not just the maintainers of Tune itself, but the sub-project maintainers that we have for like, you know, like the Go client or, or Tune Gateway and stuff like that. Um, and in one of the first topics that came up in one of our recent calls was this need for a more contributors, more reviews, more maintainers. Um, the regular calls, like the contributor calls now, the maintainer calls are one of those efforts. We also want to start doing something like office hours where like one of us at least is always there and like maybe do that every two weeks or so. Like we don't know about cadence and that kind of stuff yet. Um, we want to do that. We also want to do some sort of like education sessions where one of our maintainers or other experts talks about a certain aspect and we'll record those and make them available. And then last but not least also, um, we have discussed a lot about the path to become a maintainer um, and how that's not like a checkbox kind of path, but uh, like getting to know each other and developing trust and the right attitude and like having the right drive kind of like aspect. So it's a bit more fuzzy on how to define that, but there is an effort going on for me on the, to update and include that and like clearly communicate that on the website. Um, oh, did you just fall off? Oh no, Eric, sorry, <laughs> it just jumped. Sorry, <laughs> uh, my, my view just jumped. So so we, we're working basically towards making that happen and we would love to hear from you if you have any specific other uh, or additional ideas or pains, feel free to reach out to us all the time. We have the stalebot going on the PRs, which like flags me, Cole and Brian to help bring them along. Um, we have just recently started to have the core dash dev Slack channel, which is where any PRs that are for Quattrino and like to basically upstream contributions are like where you can reach out and where all the maintainers are hopefully paying attention. So um, we are very well aware that this is hard. We are also well aware that the day only has 24 hours, which is a problem. <laughs> um, yeah. To be clear, I'm not trying to, you know, shame anyone for, for an RV. Yeah, yeah, no, I know. You know, how, what we're doing about the more fundamental problem. Um, so it sounds like there's a lot of good ideas. Um, so that that's great to hear. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and please do feel free. Like if you're personally like stuck on, on, on a PR and you're not aware, um, we're also hoping to get this kind of like communication improved from when a review happens, right? Like basically add a lot more transparency um, so that people don't feel like they sent the PR and it fl flew over the wall and then it was radio silence when in fact it is being discussed and stuff. Um, right. It's just it, it, like, yeah, there's, there's a lot on it basically, right? So.
Does that sort of hopefully answer your question? Yeah, yeah. I see, Brian, you, you have a hand you want to add? Yeah, I was, uh, I think that uh, the one thing that has, has constantly crept in my mind about this stuff too is uh, we we think about it from how, like, so the biggest problem that obviously I think we, with a summary of what we just discussed here was like, it's about getting resources of the people who already know. And then there's, there's two ways that we need those resources. It's obviously like, you know, them reviewing the PRs, but then also sharing the, having the time to share the knowledge and, and things like that. Um, and I think that the other piece that we, we need to look at is also how to keep, uh, it, there's, there's a psychological aspect here for people who are trying to break into it, obviously writing out some sort of path, but you can't make, again, the checkbox box path. But I think that even something that we should prioritize in these conversations in general is keeping people feeling heard and incentivized. Um, and and we can kind of do that from the DevRel perspective. So when you tag, again, like Manfred said, you, when you tag us, you'll get one of us more likely to respond because uh, we're trying to make sure that the nodes are getting, you know, connected, but not necessarily having to spend as much time as actually thinking about like the specifics of the problems, like what Dane and David are talking about for your PRs. And what unfortunately happens is it's like, we'll think of, they'll think about the problem and then they're like, wow, that's a hard problem. How do we even begin approaching that? And then they have to go on to the next thing. And so the communication part there, like the feedback loop, it feels almost like, like, yeah, radio silence. And that's, that's, I think, another part that we really have to think, how do we somehow at scale without, again, like putting all, all the onus on the expert, you know, core group of maintainers that understand, you know, the, the, the details there, how do we start to solve for those? And so, um, and, and getting that feedback, at least some sort of connectivity where you're, you're at least feeling there's progress and as, even if it's a trickle of progress. And so that's that's definitely something that I don't have an answer for. I'm just literally saying we need to think more, uh, Manfred and Dane and everybody, like if there's a way that we can at least make people feel like, hey, we, we saw this, we checked in at this point, we don't have any answers. And even with what you just said right now, Dane, hey, we, we, we had a conversation about this, but we just don't know. Maybe it's even just a small, we, we, you know, we'll check back in on this later. And if we don't check in, reach back out to me or David and we'll, we'll, or whoever. So that way there's at least a follow on. Um, and then if you don't even get that follow on. Yeah, then, I mean, stuff happens where it's like, in this case, it needs to be reviewed by someone like David. Yeah. We were at like some three day event on the first day. David's like, there's this weird thing. <laughs> and we had a conversation and then we were yep. still at a three day event. <laughs> so is there some sort of systemic like bot thing that we could have that would remind you hey you you like somebody somebody has to maybe and again not has to be i i, I know this is open source uh, I, 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 to... I i yeah. i i mean i think we have tools to deal with it it's just you know there's times when like the folks that need to look at something are super busy yeah. i mean that would even happen if we had a bunch more reviewers like this is about the file system the file system is extremely sensitive to even small changes and yeah. like this kind yeah. of changes like the way the exception system works and its isolation from other things and yeah. a bunch of other things like that so like there's like there are cases where it's just like you have a tough thing like uh obviously it would have been better to say like hey we talked about it it's complicated but uh, like, that's also not a super helpful response to anyone other than like, okay, but we talked is, about it. It does feel yeah, like I, less I, like I, radio I, silence. Yeah, I mean, in, yes, in this I, I agree. It's a tiny bit more helpful than that. Yeah. In this particular <laughs> case, like not to just, just to talk through like some of the issues that I yeah. faced in this process, like I opened an issue and said like, I suspect this isn't the right way to go about it, but I'm not sure how else to go about it. So like, I'll put up a PR for this, but I want feedback before I do that you know, a couple yeah. pings like a month later, I'm like, well, I'll just put up the PR. Maybe yeah, that will help yeah. get some discussion, right? So even yeah. just a, hey, that's not the right approach. That would be a good signal, right? 
Yeah. yeah, just to be clear on the issue monitoring, we are monitoring the PRs more than the issues, but we are behind them <laughs> <Yeah>. both. So <laughs> that's, I um, suspected that. So yeah. And, <laughs> and another way that I'm looking at the the problem as was talked about in the last one a little bit, but I, you know, I, my hope is to figure out ways to encode a lot of this, you know, expert knowledge in ways uh, in terms of like a search engine you can think of and maybe mix it in with LLM-ish type stuff. Uh, but effectively, you know, the uh, try to, as best we can, figure out how to capture all of these really tricky things around file systems or the security, you know, authentication scheme or, you know, anything that, that takes a lot of expert knowledge to understand that this is why the way yeah. it is historically and all that. But that's a longer that's not something that's going to happen overnight. Um, and so I've been thinking through that as like the, that's a real solution to scale out the knowledge that all of these people have uh, and get us to hopefully something closer to uh, m removing a lot of that, the onus on the the core group of people who are busy <laughs> just getting stuff in and reviewing it and and, and then the regular yeah. day jobs. I, I do think there's one interesting point in here where we could actually move stuff is like if we actually had a way to prune the issues down to something that's actually useful because yeah, it's we just need to do a that wasteland again. like i literally opened it up and like <laughs> uh, on the first page is like oh missing support for odbc yes we're aware of that it's been 10 yep. years like yeah. if someone wants to write it great that's not really an issue maybe it's an issue i don't know like we have to come up with our policy do you uh, think yeah, that maybe then, one of so like of... there's there's Sorry. like on this first page I could see things that are like just support requests that probably would have been handled if they went to Slack to like you know really obscure things to like feature requests that are probably duplicated ten times. Dang. Um, so <clears throat> Um, what if we did something along the lines of like trying to crowd? So we did the thing where we were like Manfred, me and Cole were like, we, we rushed through and, and got through all the PRs and tried to get those like s at least somewhat into a triage mode where we were, were a little more functional. Um, but now I'm wondering if like, what if we try to make some of these meetings? So we were talking about doing these, these biweekly meetings where we, we grab uh, anybody from the community who wants to participate um, can be a part of it. And then like me or Manfred or you or Cole, somebody yeah. who, who kind of knows a little more about uh, how to connect, uh, co like at least collect things or at least take notes for the next action um, can, can kind of run it. And then we basically just get a lot of people like attacking the issues because I think that's a big thing is like so there's information I, I, overload for yeah, our I, group. I, I think that I think I think we could do that, but the first step is writing the policy for stuff that we just flat out close. Because yeah. my guess is as soon as we write down a reasonable policy for that, of the issues older than let's say three months, which just to clarify for everyone on the call, there are twenty three hundred open issues. <laughs> so like let's say anything older than three months. That isn't like a roadmap item or something that like whatever our policy is, we can close. So my guess is if we did that, we could drop from like 2,300 issues to like 600. And I, then now I, we have an approachable thing. So like maybe I think we three should months get together. Small, <laughs> I, 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 I don't care. Sure. I, I, just throwing that out there. Gotcha. I'm saying if we got together and sat down and wrote like a general policy for like just the part where we just flat out close stuff yeah and like i don't know some standard messages to paste in then like so, i can watch tv and just close issues for like a few nights we could, we could yeah, just to be it. clear just yeah. to be clear um we've done that for the prs and mm -hmm. encoded that a little bit and we're using the stale board for that and we still have to review some of the old ones, but that stale bot can do the same for issues. And I have that on my backlog to do that. It's just one of those things. And like this, that, things that need that, to be yeah, figured yeah. out, like roadmap, for example, should not be closed. That's the sort Correct. of stuff we have to figure yeah. out. So that, that that's why I was saying, like, if we, we went through this process where we just looked at, like, I don't know, a few weeks of stuff that was old and crusty, a few weeks of stuff that was like middle-aged and like, you know, some new stuff. And then we 
went through and wrote up some policies and like tried it out. So like, if we do that, what I'm saying is like doing anything other than that from where we are is just a real waste of time. But sure. once we like use the bulk, you know, I don't know, low pass filter to just remove like 80 plus percent of the issues, yeah. then we can go through and start to prune these. And then like issues should actually become much more like effective in what they're doing. Yeah. Um, and then we could maybe have issue reviews where it's like, yeah. oh, there's this interesting problem. So I'll point it out, which like, you know, it's just falls through the cracks. Like, And, and my thing too, is in terms of people feeling empowered that are like, I think that part of it is in giving people who have are either on ground zero or are like, it's back to Eric's point of like, he's been wanting to do, do something, but he hasn't felt interaction. And so doing this scale stuff where we're taking care of the bulk of, of some of these issues while simultaneously maybe even and providing a platform for him and other, and, and, and like uh, Apple and all the other uh, kind of, uh, you know, people who are, are coming in from these different areas feeling like, well, this hasn't been looked at this blah, blah, blah. It gives them actually a potential platform to, Hey, well, now that we've skinned this stuff down and we're looking at this now, like, could I bring up my, my issue? And then we, we take a, a deeper look into the, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I think trying to provide a opportunity for anybody to get involved in helping us prune these things as well as discuss them will actually involve uh, the larger community into seeing why it's a difficult problem as well as uh, maybe helping us scale some of the issues and being the very early ways that they can get involved in the community yes. without having, well, without having to immediately go into like fix a doc or fix this, or, you know, it could be a very community driven way of, of doing, yeah. uh, getting participating. Cool. All right. Uh, since, no since Juan, I noticed that you jumped on. I also wanted to mention um, Vinita was on, but jumped off. So um, related to both of them, um, there is a, the file system that we just discussed earlier. There is a PR that is a difficult discussion as well from Carol around the slashes. David, if you have time to potentially weigh in on that, that's something that probably also needs to be there, uh, that soon. There's probably there more than that, it. but they're discussing there, it. Sort of. There's a chat somewhere where they're chatting about it. All right, cool. Just want to make sure yeah. that it has your attention. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah, thanks. All right. Anything else you want to talk about? My Slack discussion can go at the end if anybody else has something. Yeah, maybe one heads up. I know um, me and David discussed how the file system uh, stuff is going to be working. So we currently have a PR open to um have a migration guide for the uh file system switch um and then the next step we will do is we will disable the hadoop file system as well which will be a breaking change and force everyone to either enable the new native ones or re-enable them on their catalogs um and in that when we do that, when David does that PR to do the code change, we'll also do a, do a docs PR that basically explains like, don't enable the old legacy stuff, move to the new one and look at the migration guide kind of thing. And then that's going to sit for a while. So those two will come very soon and then we'll have it sit for a while. And then at some stage, we're going to maybe deprecate all the old ones or even deprecate and remove them all at the same time. Uh, that's not clear yet because me and David discussed this a bit. There's a lot of properties to deprecate and that might, might get very noisy. <laughs> so we're not sure if we just like deprecate and kill it all at once or deprecate and let it sit deprecated for a while. Um, yep. But the main thing is um, we won't be enabling all of them. Like that's that's architecturally not possible. And, and and also like design wise, not a good choice anyway. So, so you have to explicitly say I'm on S3 or I'm on GCS and not like, oh, it's just gonna work sort of thing. Makes sense, David? Did I get this kind of right? <laughs> yeah, that's correct. Cool. All right. All right, anything else, anyone?
Or do you want to talk about Slack and chat servers, Brian? Slack and chat servers. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to take uh, anybody's time on this. This is going to be pretty, hopefully, quick. Um, so I saw that we we did the temporary license again, which is great. Uh, I got all my chat history back. <laughs> um, so what we did a temporary Slack, license. Somebody somebody turned on the. I'm guessing a free cert trial or something. I I'm not aware of anything. Nope. Maybe it was Martin or I don't know. Um. Anyways, uh, so it's it is turned on temporarily, uh, and I and which is great, uh, and I want to uh, and export my stuff. But I was thinking we should do a like another big dump of all of the history, and I was also going to um, propose do so. I don't know what the status is. Like I know at one point Starburst was was funding uh, Slack, and now it's just the free one. So I'm guessing that the uh they like we basically just pulled out of, of doing that and the free one's not too bad but then you lose obviously like the history you don't technically own that stuff and so um for my work and for the community that i've been building around my company i've set up a matrix server um and for those that don't know what matrix is it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like basically a Slack server that you would run yourself. Uh, it's open source. Uh, there's different implementations. So the matrix thing itself is like a, uh, think I think of it kind of like iceberg. It's like a spec, but then there's different implementations. And so, um, so the, the, uh, main people behind it have like a copy left implementation. That's really good. And then they have all the apps and everything. Uh, so it's a drop in replacement basically for Slack. It also then has the Fediverse protocol, whatever that's called, the activity protocol. Um, and so you can connect it with all the different things in the Fediverse email and all these other bridges that you can set up, including Slack, including Discord or whatever community. So I, I just, you know, was thinking, would it make sense, especially from the fact that you could, we don't even have to even run our own server. You could use the general matrix.org provider that the main people run behind it um, and just create some Trino channels and then run, all you would run would be like a uh, bridge that would literally take anything that's happening in Slack and spits it out into uh, this matrix uh, server. If you if we wanted to host our own, then we would own the data for that. Uh, if we want it, if we didn't want to host our own, then matrix.org would own that data to some degree. I don't think they would do anything with it. I think they're just literally holding on to it. So, um, and, and there's no payment uh, to pay for those chat rooms or anything like that. You just, you know, so it's a much more open, much more, uh, it, like locked in version of these things. And uh, I think people are getting sick of discord already. I think Slack is a good enough system, but then, you know, it's always about losing your conversations and these conversations actually hold a lot of very valuable context um, to things, discussions we've had. Uh, a lot of it gets discussed outside of GitHub before it gets discussed in there. And so sometimes you'll, you'll miss some of that old context. So, I wanted to throw that out there as like, what do what do people think about potentially do, using either matrix.org or hosting, you know, that's actually pretty easy to host your own server uh, using this element thing and paying somebody to run it for you. It's much cheaper than Slack <laughs> to run it for you, by the way. I don't know. My personal opinion is that Slack is currently good enough, even without the history. And whatever is yeah, useful in Slack should just be moved elsewhere. And I don't have time to like worry about migrating and that kind of stuff. Moving from Slack to something else is going to be a huge interruption to community. It wouldn't be moving It'd the be community, difficult. by the way. The, com the community would continue talking on free Slack, but everything that's said and anything that we bridge would would get copied over into matrix and so you can be on either side um of is that. it bi-directional you no uh well i think maybe it can be uh, i think you could do technically a, a bi-directional way but i for me i would say the the data gets stored <laughs> and, and within the matrix side 
people can chat on either either section. Um, I think there actually, yeah, there is a way to do it if, if, with Slack. I don't know about Discord, but which we don't have to care about. But uh, there, the Slack way, there there is a way to have like a thing there, but it doesn't look doesn't look well. <laughs> Slack doesn't want people to do this thing, so obviously, so it's not like it looks great <laughs> in their mm -hmm. stuff. Um, but yeah, it would provide a way for us to at least back up our data if you look at it one way. And otherwise, you know, it could just be a slow organic, whatever ends up picking up steam and that kind of stuff. Uh, Slack wouldn't own the systems <laughs> and it'd be something that eventually exists on a much more uh, distributed type of uh, system. So, and it's easier to migrate, no lock-in kind of thing. So just a thought. And then we can continue on Slack is the other nice thing about it. Uh, I'm happy to do some of the work around this, uh, but I just want to know if this is even something we're interested in doing. I, I mean, I know we've had a bunch of discussions about Slack. I'm not convinced that there's that much useful stuff on Slack. Sure. Like the vast majority of things are either discussions about some very specific, like PR or bugs, like like code change that sort of thing uh or it's like people with very random support stuff like the the level of like repeated requests isn't that high and like they get pulled into docs and like the requests kind of go down so um you know i I personally see like if I'm answering the same question a few times, then I'm literally messaging Manfred or someone else saying like, Hey, maybe we should improve our docs on this. Or I go and I patch the docs myself or yeah. like whatever. Um, but if you like look through the, like the main channels that, so you have like a few dev channels and then the main channels that actually get questions are like uh, beginner and troubleshooting and they aren't so much repeated and so the ones that are repeated are things like hey i have this extremely specific setup and like i'm getting like this like error out of it and like how exactly do i configure everything about my system and it's like well you hire some experts and like <laughs> they set it up for you like or like follow the generic advice and stop trying to like tune out the last five percent of memory usage like, I'm sure buying an extra three servers is cheaper than hiring someone. Yeah. So, like, it, and that's that's fairly consistent. And then there's things like, I don't know, there's lots of people with, like, I'm trying to connect to this super weird, you know, thing. Like, oh, I, I get poor performance the other day. I get poor performance when I try and join between Kudu and, like, Iceberg. And it's like, yeah, because yeah, no one uses Kudu, like, yeah. so it doesn't get a lot of love. Like, yeah. if you want to work on it, make it faster, great. But like, I went yeah. and looked at the Kudu, you know, who's working on it. And there's basically kind of dead at this point, yeah. Yeah. you know. So like, you know, we could like spend a bunch of effort trying to pull this information together or, you know, and then like actually direct people off to look at it and like that sort of thing yeah i just like i'm not super convinced it's worth like much effort right in my where like i think on the other hand if we actually spend that time like you know uh something as simple as like just keeping notes on like what people ask about and if like you get three or four at the same of the same topic then maybe we add some more docs yeah like i I'd much rather see stuff in docs I agree, but I think that for me, I've always, I've always dreamed of like, so there, there are, there are a lot of things that I, that's how I got to a lot of like adding a certain doc or adding a tutorial or focusing on a certain thing for Trina community broadcast. It would usually span out of the, the consistent stuff that I'd see on Slack, but it, I think it would be cool to systemically try to approach some of those problems. Uh, <laughs> And again, build tooling, open tooling, and all that kind of stuff around that. Uh, and you, yeah, I, you already know the stuff in terms of ways I'm thinking of, of some of the stuff. And so that's why I think I'm kind of, you know, thinking that this is yet another set of signals that 
we can monitor and have uh, somewhat, you know, bring, bring, bring things in. But if it's in Slack's kind of data, data dump, then they, they rule on the, well, if you're not paying us, then 30 days is all you get <laughs> or 60 days or whatever it is. Just, just to be clear, I don't think we have any objection for like potentially configuring to get it out into Matrix, but like none of us will actually like no, none have of you guys time have to do that. So if, if you that. have time potentially to see and see if you can get some useful stuff out of it, yeah. I don't think we have any objections yeah. to that. I mean, I think our we're better spending our effort on things like the issue stuff we talked about earlier. Sure. Um, sure. The trying to uh like uh get people to move the dev discussions off of private channels to public which i spend a good amount of time okay. telling people about uh because <laughs> yeah. you know i mean in the old days we didn't have a great place to have those discussions yeah. like i think with the core maintainers mm -hmm. it's the channel is much much cleaner yeah um so i think it's it's easier to talk about stuff in those channels. So cool. like, um, you know, things like that, where it's like, I think that's a much better time of our spending our effort than we are, we are today. Um, okay. And then that like, if we have repeated questions, like, great, let's add more docs. Like at the know. very least, then I'll just make sure uh, before this trial ends, I'm going to do like as big of a dump, as I can, other than private channels or anything like that, which I don't think I can do, um, other than my own. So then I'm going to just do as big of a dump as I can. And then I, if possible, I'm going to try to like, just do a periodic, like before the 30 days is up just to have, I think I mean, it's, I think it's, yeah. it, it, that's an easy, just get that set up and have like a regular thing that keeps that information. Cause I just like the potential at least of, of pulling that stuff at some point into, uh, I mean, I, I only know what channels I'm in. But yeah. uh, I can say that mostly it's the two I mentioned, core dev, and then there's like the gateway channels are very yeah. busy and everything else is pretty much a ghost town. And actually, like, I try yeah. and like, I, I think we should think about uh, pruning more stuff because it's not helpful to have these ghost town channels because there's hardly sure. anyone in them. Yeah. And, like, yeah. it's an easy way to, like, lose people. Yeah. So... Um, Makes sense. Yeah, I, I I'm totally. That, that's a good that. idea. I'll gonna put this down. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. This is good. So I won't I won't work on that. Then I think I think uh, that's a good that that's helps me with direction in terms of uh, time and energy and focus. But I am gonna like dump some of this stuff anyways, <laughs> just to have it. Uh, if we ever do find the need for it uh, later on, and then uh, um, yeah, it's just and so keep you know keep in your mind if Slack ever changes their policy or things get, get rough, that's an option. And we can, again, keep people in Slack with whatever service they offer us uh, and then move slowly, you know, make that a secondary location that we may eventually have as the uh, main one, may not, or just maybe both. So, cool. cool. Um, Sinjuan, did you have any topic to want to talk about before we jump off? I think otherwise we are probably done. I'm all ready. Thanks for asking. <laughs> yeah david dane cool are we good i'm good all right thank you so much um this was great um we will see you again in the september edition <laughs> thanks for coming see you guys Bye.